Hello. <coughs> Fucking pizza. It's good cold, it's good warm, it's good for breakfast, it's good for dinner, it's good round or square. Pizza's even good when it's bad. But today we're gonna look at the question that's on everybody's mind. Would it make a good table? Well, if you clicked on this video, you saw the thumbnail, and yes, you know it'll make a great table. So let's get started, and I'll show you how I did it. You all ready to learn how to make a pizza the right way? Making it great. Yes, I'm ready. One of the beautiful things about pizza is you can put pretty much anything on it. I've even seen people put a slice of pizza on top of their slice of pizza. Ah. That's weird. But we're going to go with pepperoni because it's ridiculously easy to carve and everybody can recognize pepperoni. Let's start this process at the beginning. First of all, are your hands washed? <laughs> sure are. Good. Once I had the basic shape cut out, I rounded over the tip of the slice so it would look like it was hanging. Then I flipped it over to route out a slot where the apron could sit. Now, I should really be wearing a mask. The dust that carving kicks up is really gross. Truth is, I make a lot of bad decisions in the workshop. Somebody on Reddit told me Die Trying was a good name for my channel because that's exactly what I'm going to end up doing if I keep making poor decisions in the shop. I thought that was pretty clever. I actually stuck my finger directly into the table saw about five years ago. If you want to see the full pictures unblurred, there's a link down in my description to my Instagram. Go check them out. <laughs> Meanwhile, back on the project, I decided to sand the top smooth and redraw my design before I got started with the carving. I started by using these little carving bits in my router to draw lines around all the pepperonis and separate the crust from the pizza. It's crust from the pizza? Just be sure to do it exactly this way every time. Any variance wouldn't be made. Making it great. Making it great. Making it great. After that, I put a straight bit in my router and started routing down around all the lines I had already drawn and left some little spots where the cheese would look like it was bubbling up. After that, I grabbed my rotary tool and used this bit that I actually have no idea what the fuck it's for. It barely worked, so I decided to order the right bits and move on to cutting out the dripping cheese. I didn't know what tool to use for this, so I just grabbed my Dremel and gave it a rough shape, knowing that I could shape it more once I got the wood carving bits in the mail for the rotary tool. Here I'm using a ball gouge on the angle grinder, which was a little too aggressive for the pine. It just kind of ripped it apart. While I waited for the carving bits to show up in the mail, I started working on the apron. I cut the pieces, and then I did some measuring, and I cut some more pieces until I had a good fit. As soon as the bits showed up, I went right back to carving because that was way more fun. Sadly, a few minutes after I started working with the rotary tool, it died. So I ran over to Harbor Freight and grabbed this new rotary tool. And let me tell you, this was the biggest piece of shit tool I have ever bought. Harbor Freight has a lot of trash, but I've got some tools from there that have done me pretty well. This thing died 10 minutes after I bought it. Luckily I had finished carving so I just returned it and could move on to doing the painting. This was the make or break it moment and honestly I thought I was going to break it. Painting like this isn't something I'm particularly good at, but by layering up some acrylic paints mixed with water I was able to get a pretty convincing look. Actually I was really thrilled with it. Watering down these acrylic paints worked just like wood stain. After I finished painting I put my first quick coat of spray poly on and then moved on to making the base. Now, do you remember the safety procedures you learned about the dough roller? I sure do. Good, because we're going to be putting them into practice right now. I glued and nailed together the apron that I had cut earlier and then using an old piece of maple tabletop I had laying around, I cut down some strips for the rest of the stand. I wanted to make something simple that wouldn't take away from the ridiculousness of the pizza tabletop. If you can't tell, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing here, and most of my projects kind of go that way. If you came here to learn something, I'm sorry. Now, because I'm not a fan of long videos with too much information, I'm going to skim through this part and give you little to no information. I cut some angles, I made some half lap joints, I glued them, and then, when I was all done, I primed it and painted it black. And then I brought the slice of pizza out and I put it on top and I realized that this wasn't the most stable base I've ever made. Which is fine because I can just add this little part right here. Pizza dude's got 30 seconds. After that it was just a matter of sealing everything up with the gloss poly and there we go. Check that out. My god I'm proud of this thing. This is one of my favorite things I've ever made. I don't know if anybody will ever buy this or if it's worth the dough. Hmm? 
but I don't really care because I think I might keep it. And I don't even know where the hell I'd put it. I just think it's cool, it's different. It's different than anything I've ever made, and I found it really fun to make. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe or check out this video, and thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye, see you again, and have a good dream. That's some pie.